morning and welcome to yet another Britain Yankee Craft Beer Podcast Instant Brew Review. And I'm beginning to think that I should change the name from podcast to video cast because we've been doing more videos than audios just recently. Today, however, we have a great show for you. We have got some beers from the great state of Colorado, Denver to be precise, Prost, Prost Brewing Company. How do you say it? Prost. Yeah, Prost. There we go. Brewing Company. We have four of their fantastic German beers, uh, which are all classic German styles. And with me to help taste these and pass their opinions is my good friend and co-host, sometime co-host, Mr. Chuck Fort from Church Street, Senior Brewing Consultant. Hello, Chuck. Hello. Hello, hello. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Great to see you. And I understand that you are now a medal winner because you've recently had, well, it's not the first medal, right? Yeah, it's not the first one. Just Oh, it's the first one you one. got. Well, yes, it's uh, second. So we took a silver place, second place. So In? That's good. Uh, at the World Beer Championship and uh, our Bach. Oh, and that's sponsored by? Sponsored by... That's not the World Beer Beer Cup, is it? Well, it's um, not the World Beer Cup. World Beer Championship. That is... um, uh, What's the name of the magazine again? It's uh, Beer Connoisseur. Beer Connoisseur. Great magazine. I subscribe to it. I'm going to get my bell out here, and I think I'm going to give that a ding. There we go. Fantastic. Well done, Chuck. All right. And joining me as... Uh, what is it? Oh, shotgun. That's right. Yep. You're, you're both sitting together there. Joining in the shotgun seat is another good friend of mine, Mr. Steve Newman, who is the owner and original brewer, and I think he still brew a little bit, from Brother Chimp Brewing Company in North Aurora, Illinois. Hey, Steve. Hey. Hello. Great to see you. Hello, hello, hello. hello you see, yeah. <laughs> He's picking up. He's still in your hello yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> well, I've, I've been here enough times. Oh, there you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and actually, Steve was here, uh, let's see, about three or four weeks before you actually opened your brewery, and you opened your brewery the same week as they closed everything for COVID, right? Yes. It was actually, and Chuck yeah. was here too, as I remember. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> for that one. Timing yeah. is everything, yeah. Steve. That's what I've been told. Mine seems a bit off. <laughs> We're still here two years later, you almost are, two years and later. And expanded, so. I should say. So. Yes. So welcome, everybody. Um, This is an instant brew review. So we're going to open these beers. I have four 12-ounce cans, and we're going to pour them into sample glasses that I have ready here, and we'll tell you all about it. Because if you go out to Colorado, this is one of the best German beer breweries that you can go to, in my opinion. Okay. Right, let's open the first one. The first one we have, and I'll show the camera here, is uh, a Kolsch. Hang on. Did I show it? Yes, I did. There we go. This is a Kolsch. Now, while I'm opening this, who wants to tell me what Kolsch is all about? Oh, it's a Kolsch-style beer. Ah, you're right, because they're not allowed to use Kolsch, right? You have to oh, say Kolsch-style. Okay. It's, if it's brewed in Cologne, then you call it Kolsch. Okay. If it's brewed in Cologne, you have to call it Kolsch, yeah. okay? And this was not, not brewed in Cologne. Slapped on the roof. Yes, right, exactly. So I'm going to give that a good pour out here. Um, I've got a little bit left in there, so you want to top up? There we go. All right. Nothing like a good top up. There we go. Right. So, color. Yep, color looks right. Nice and light. Clear. Pretty clear. Yes, indeed. And so good. and is this this what is this is what a, a coach should be? Pretty, now you've made a coach as well, haven't you? Yes. Yeah. Over at that. So you both made coach. You've made a coach at Church Street, right? Yeah. And this okay. It's real pretty. It's a nice looking. Okay. Look at the carb. Look at the carbs yeah. coming up. Now I should there. say that this like beer. Um, and I have some notes here about this beer, and I want to make sure that uh, I get it right. Um, oh, wait a minute. I got the. There it is. The coach. This is Halatau tradition. Halatau Mittelfru, Wyoming Premium Pills, and a Wyoming Cologne, which okay. is the malt bill, right? They're using tradition hops? It says here oh, they're using Halatau Tradition. Okay. And yeah. then Halatau Mittelfru. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh tr- so two different Halatau. Well, Halatau Tradition is a Halatau. 
It's like saying right. hugs have milk or something. So they're just using two. People usually just say traditional variations. So, <laughs> and I know that um, brew in Cologne, if you're there, you get a special glass. And I have one of those over oh. the back here somewhere, oh, okay. if I can find it. There we go. In fact, it's the Church Street special glass. Oh, there there we go. Oh. This is your seventh anniversary. No, eighth anniversary glass. Oh. But as you can see, this is tall and thin. And when you pour the beer in here in Cologne, they put it down, you drink it. And if you haven't finished it by 20 minutes, they come around and say, would you like a fresh one? <laughs> because Kolsch is meant to be uh, drunk quite fresh. Right. So what about uh, the aroma? Flowery. A little florally. Yes, very much. It, very nice. To me, I have a trouble distinguishing Pilsners and Kolsch's and, you know, unless it's a really strong one. This is always a very light Yeah, these one. are very okay. delicate yeah. beers. Yeah, you know. delicate beer. And they're not caramely. Like, this doesn't have any caramel notes or anything whatsoever. Yeah, I think it's a whiter it's style than most Pilsners. You might start to get a little bit of that yeah, and caramel in there, a little bigger. more biscuity, malty, than yeah. out, yeah. of a, out of a Kolsch. Now, I always look, go ahead and drink, gentlemen, and I'll tell you mm. what I look for when I drink oh, it. Oh, I am. I like to have a little bit of a kind of a bready finish. Mm -hmm. Not really bready, but you know, it's kind of on that. You know what I mean? And I think you said biscuity, yeah. so maybe that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Um, what do you reckon? Let me drink. Go ahead. Yes, yes. So, I mean, that's the first thing you know, I look for is it to be, it can't be caramely or thick or, you know, can't have a big mouthfeel. It's, it's got, you know, a nice, light, uh, crisp feel to it. And, uh, you know, you get an, it's kind of very pleasant nose. You know, it should just be, it, nothing's overpowering right. on these right. beers. Mm -hmm. Everything's just, you know, right. everything's in very small increments. It's almost like the everyday beer that you want to drink. Right. If you are sitting beside... Yeah, I mean, this could be a summer Especially beer. in a summer. What, summer, what, summer, summer, what river summer runs day. through Cologne? Yeah. What yeah. river runs through Cologne? I don't know. Oh, okay. Maybe it's, geography's not that Maybe good. it's a river of Cologne. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, that oh cool. the Cologne, that's what it is. Is it the Cologne? Isn't it the Cologne? Yes. We're not good at geography, as you can Sorry. tell, <laughs> but we do like our beers. Yes, and this one is so quite this one nice and refreshing. What I want a culture yeah, to be, right? Yeah, it is. It's very, very light, drinkable so it's because it's light, but yeah. it's got some flavor to it. Right. Yeah. When nice you, light, you don't need to add a lot of flavors. Everything comes out. You know. Just yeah. yeah. Um, to me, a Kolsch is a perfect lawnmower beer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even mm -hmm. though you know, I say that with all due respect to the fact that. You don't want to sink it down, but you certainly can. I mean, you want to get the flavor out of it. It's pretty yeah. darn good. Mine went pretty fast. So yours went very fast, and we only have a 12-ounce can. So. I know. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, and there's some rules. So, gentlemen, uh, do we have a thumbs up for this one? Yes. Yes. Thumbs up for this, definitely. definitely. We'll be right back with our second beer from Prost Brewing Company. And we're back. Beer number two from our variety pack of German lagers is the North German, hang on, I've got to read that properly, North German style lager. Again, they call it a North German style, and this is a Pilsner. So you're allowed to call things, oh, I think the reason why it's called North German is because Pilsners originated in Czech Republic, didn't they? In the Pilsen yeah, district. The town of Pilsen. Yes. The town of Pilsen. So, we're going to give this a go. Now, tell me how this might compare to the Kolsch. What are we going to expect here? A little bit bigger. Okay. Probably. Mm -hmm. We're going to find out. We'll find out. Well, looks like it's a little more golden. Yeah. As the as the poor cam will reveal, as I put yeah, that one there. You said they yeah. stuck with the house. There we go. This, right? There we so go. Usually Perfect. use Saz when I do my pills. Yeah. Um, yeah, this again is the Halatau tradition, which I'm assuming is a a noble pill, a noble hop. Is that right? Yeah. One of the noble. Hops? Yeah. Was one. There's a guy who plays football guy by the name of Noble, but I don't think it was him. Right there we go. There we go. A little more there. A little more for you. Now this comes out with a beautiful um, white head. I will show the uh, poor cam that beautiful head there. Look at that. That's really nice. 
and we've got these small sample glasses and it is sticking around um color yeah it's just it's a little it's almost a little darker than straw mm -hmm. you know yeah. it's not not exactly of course these, these you have to remember these glasses are small yeah so in a, a larger glass it might be a little darker than this and and in terms of a glass i think a good glass for a pilsner i just happen to have one that we have had a pre-match bevy in and we can show you that uh from brother chimp there we yeah, go there we go <laughs> We're I'll an equal opportunity place here. <laughs> um, that's called a Willie Becker, if I remember yes. rightly. And this is the perfect pills glass. I don't know why, but it's shaped lovely. Um, it's light. It's delicious to drink from. Yeah. Right, back to the pills. Okay. So, the Pearl's Pilsner. Have you had a chance to get the aroma? Mm -hmm. Once again, I'm getting that kind of lagery thing, but it's a little heavier than the Kolsch. Yeah, you still get the uh, the uh, the hops in the nose a little bit, which is kind of yeah. nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, drink it down, right, folks. Right, I'm drinking, I'm drinking, oh. Now, I should tell you that Prost got a silver medal in 2020 for this, oh. but I don't know from what competition, but yeah. I think it might have been GABF. I don't know. Yeah, could be. Yeah. Prost Bruin has three locations in the Denver area. There's one that's actually downtown Denver. There's one that's in the Highlands Ranch area, which I think is south and a little bit west. And then there's another one up in Fort Collins. So mm -hmm. got plenty of opportunity. They're doing pretty well, apparently. Yeah, they, they are. <laughs> They're doing okay. Yeah, so I mean, you get a little bit of, a little more, just a hint of mouth sweetness at first, but then it's really quickly followed by uh, the hops. It's it not, is. It's, it's, but it's not overpowering, but it, no, it's definitely there. But definitely more than on the mm -hmm. um, the yep. pulse, you know. Yeah, that, yeah. That's yeah. kind of a yeah. distinguishing factor that the hop comes yeah. out a little bit more in the pilsner generally. And you get more uh, hop in the finish too, like mm -hmm. after you're done drinking it. You sort of, you know, so we're kind of stepping up here in the yeah. uh, in the lager. It's uh, not like a, you know, it's not like a resiny hop. It, it's, no, but it's 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 there. It is it is nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would infinitely prefer to drink this type of beer to any of the macro brewers beers which yeah. let's face it they all came over to the united states and they were germans and they brewed the and beers is, accordingly but mm -hmm. yeah, and this is more typical of a, of a german style pilsner a czech pilsner would be more malt forward right yeah you know, so. and of course the classic one there is pilsner urkel which if you haven't tried pilsner yeah. urkel you've got to go out and do it because that's the baseline folks um you guys have um brewed pilsners Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I think you brewed one which was uh, a smoke pilsner. Uh, no, that well, was a smoke no, no, pilsner. Was 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 that yes. we smoked. But we did actually have four different pilsners on last year at one point. Wow! We nice. did a little. All pilsners are not the same for me, right? And you got names for your pilsners, but I know Chuck, yeah. your your Church Street one was just called Pils. They just call it Church Street Pils. There you go. Yeah. Simple, and that's what they the, wanted to call it. Chuck's Chuck Pills, but Chuck's Chuck nobody could say that. <laughs> <laughs> say it three times yeah. fast, anyway. You know, so yeah. Um, so back to this Pross one. I think this is uh, a very fine example of it. Now, would this be the type of beer that you would do a slow pour with, or is that a Czech lager? Oh, you mean one of those? Uh, yeah, when well, you, me, me, yeah. me personally, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> but I wouldn't do a slow pour again. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> okay. Um, this one, I like this a lot as an everyday drinker. Um, Prost, yeah. you do a good job. Fantastic. I do. Haven't had a bad one yet. Yeah. We're 50% the way yeah. through. Is this a good one? Thumbs yeah. up? Yeah. Thumbs up. Thumbs up to this one. Yeah. We're good. Back in a second with beer number three. And we're back yet again. This is speed tasting, folks. I gotta tell you, the next one up, we're gonna go a little dark. We're gonna go Dunkel. Now, I think Dunkel means Dunkel dark. Means dark. Yes. That's it. Hey, can't beat that. Mm -hmm. So this is their Dunkel. This is coming in at, uh, I gotta check this, 5.6. And I forgot to tell you that the Kolsch was 4.8 and the Pilsner is 4.9. Anyway, so the Dunkel um, has always been one of my favorite ones. Uh, in terms of the style because 
it's kind of a it kind of starts to get a little more malty shall we say oh, yeah. is that, is yeah. that what yeah. it should be yeah. yeah so gentlemen have you done donkles yes yes and many what's your donkle <laughs> called <laughs> what is your donkle hey, called okay so <laughs> we're gonna rename it first of all but it oh. used to be called bob's your donkle what? Oh, oh Bob. <laughs> so, like for that. those of you who know a few well, Englishisms, Bob's your uncle means there you go, there you have it. That means, but and I don't know where it comes from. I don't know the origin. So there we go. There's yours. I'm going to pull this one for the camera. Hopefully, the camera is still we working. We've had a few technical difficulties with the camera. Oh, I've given you a nice looking head there, Steve. Mark, Fantastic. Is what that is? A what? It's a Mark Nasky pour. What with the head? Yeah. You so, do these. just to let you know, Mark Nasky was a good friend of ours. He was a co-host on it. He passed away uh, just about six months ago. Yeah. And he always used to say with the head, there's a beer in there somewhere. We'll find it. Yeah. He was an expat <laughs> fin. So, give you a little more. Okay. Dunkel. Dark. Well, as you can see, it's definitely dark. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, a good thing. And in a, but it's, beer, a beer around glass, it would be a little darker. It would yeah. be fantastic. And some, yeah, some, some dunkles are darker than this, mm -hmm. uh, but this is certainly within the range. Now, one of my favorite beers is the Dunkel Weiss, which is uh, a Weiss beer or a wheat beer, right? right. Dark wheat beer, and I think for Hens, the Fauna makes it. Dunkel is dark and Weiss is white. You know, okay, so it's yeah, dark wheat beer, <laughs> but it's got that kind of wheaty. So <laughs> yeah, we're not yeah. expecting any of that kind of bananary clovey mm -hmm. thing going on here we're expecting no, no. a lager with some extra malt right yeah this is the dunkel is like the if you look at like dunkel bach oh. doppelbach they're kind of like just in a row boom boom and the bach is in the middle doppel's at the top end the dunkel's at the lighter end of, of yeah, the exactly. dark german yeah. lagers and then you go to the schwartz beer yeah the schwartz oh beer, the yes sort of, the schwartz beer schwartz beer is in there you, you, you the source beer's got like a black malt character yeah. in it, so it makes it sort of... And you just brewed that. Yeah. We, not that long ago, we didn't yeah. bring you a little taste for like Oh, thank you. We'll have that after after the uh, recording here. <laughs> but the Dunkelbach and the and the Doppelbach shouldn't have any... any a Dunkelbach? Yeah. A Dunkels. Is this a, a Dunkel? A book? Or is this just... Is this a Bach beer? It's a Dunkel. No. Was, he, no, he okay. Was, I was just, Dunkel, Bach, Bach, Bach Doppelbach. Doppelbach. None of them have that... Black malt. No, you'll, you will hear I'm, people. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah so I'm, uh, We're only having four ounces each. What's going on? <laughs> but you will hear it, Stephen Morgan Fuse, and you will hear people say Dunkelsbach. It's like, why do you say Dunkelsbach? Just say Bach, you know? Yeah. It's very confusing. Dunkelsbach? I didn't know he'd left. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. there yeah. we go. All right. Anyway. Let's, uh, sure. I'm not getting any, I'm getting a slight, slightly more sweet aroma from yeah, it mm -hmm. but yeah again oh, yeah. Yeah. it's it's right it's just very subtle differences and i'm afraid my nose is old yeah more of a malt than a flower yeah it's mm. like, like um oh yeah if you drink Iyengar's dunkel it's a little it's a little darker than this one um so it's not quite as as big as that beer yeah uh, this is but it's it's still it still has everything that it, yeah. that it should have no. And as far as nice. this beer goes, wow. I mean, you can drink a lot of these. Yeah, yeah. Now, very easy to drink. Yeah. Now, if I refer to my notes, and I don't want to get this wrong, we talked a lot about Wireman being a malt producer that a lot of you guys, yeah. you brewers, um, use to produce traditional German styles. Yeah. Yeah, uh, premium Pills, that's the one we had before. This one has got Weimann Munich and Weimann Carafa. Carafa? Carafa. Oh, it's got so, a little Carafa in it? Yeah. So I don't know. So it must uh, be very, very little. <laughs> very little. <laughs> so what does that do to it? What, so the, the, the Munich and the Carafa. It, at the levels he's using it here, he's using it to get a little bit of color. color. Yeah. Because I, mm -hmm. you can't really taste any of the Carafa. There's no real like burnt malt yeah. character. Okay. That's right. a but if you used enough of it, you get like a, a Schwartz beer. Okay. Right. Yeah. Ah, yeah, right, okay. Yeah, and the Munich more, I'm assuming, is because, is this beer very popular in Munich? Yeah, it's, it's just a lot of style. Yeah, yeah. But um, it's, yeah. Munich, you find in, in all, in the Dunkel, Bach, and all the Doppelbachs, they're all, every yeah. amount of Munich. Like, it's, at, it's sort of showcasing that malt, really. Yeah. The Munich style malt. Mm -hmm. This one, of course, is lighter, but as you get up, um, 
I'm sure. I'm guessing the winter, which is supposedly a bog, I'm guessing that's going to be more Munich y, probably. He's yeah, telling us about the next dark. beer yeah, that's coming up. So, yeah. <laughs> I think you probably use the light Munich and then you yeah, use the so. carrot to darken it up a little. And yeah. uh, that's the next beer that we've got, the final beer in our series. So, you know, we'll see how that works out. So, I like this a lot. In fact, if I had a choice between the Pilsner and this one, I'd drink this all day because yeah. it just has a little more. I don't think it's got more body. They're both light lagers, yeah. if you will, yeah. you know, lighter than your ales, right? But um, this is, just has a twinge to it that well, makes you go, ooh, I like that, you know. A, a little more going on. Yeah. It's got the more chutzpah, you yes. know. Well, yeah. It's actually my niece's favorite style is oh. a dunkel. Oh. So on the uncle theme, our oh. dunkel is called Monkey's Uncle Monkey's Dunkel. Uh, <laughs> because if you there hadn't you noticed it, Brother Chimp has a chimp as their uh, style there. Yes. Look, you can see it right there. Fantastic. All right, well, this one um, has gone to the top of my list in terms of the three so far. For our fourth beer that's mm. coming up, we have one that I know nothing about. I haven't actually tasted this one yet, and you kind of referred to it as a golden bock. Well, well it's, it's, on can. Can. It's, it's, it's on the can. It's on the can. Well, it's on the can, I know, but... I mean, we open it up. Who knows we looked on the can beforehand, well, folks. When you open it up, well, that's when we'll know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the Prost, I'm assuming, uh, Prost Dunkel, we're going to give this one a thumbs up. Take I'm going to give thumbs it two up. thumbs up because it's my favorite so far. Oh, well. oh. But um, it's, you know what? They're all great beers. Fantastic. Oh, and by the way, this is done using the decoction process, which oh, yeah. I think you at uh, Church Street are yeah. able to do. Nice and that thing. involves mashing twice uh, maybe we come back after this break and find out what decoction really is okay yeah back in a sec sounds like all right we're back for the final beer in our prost brewing quartet this one comes out only, I'm assuming, in the winter because it's called Winter Lager. We'll show the camera there. Um, this, according to the uh, can, and as we've already alluded to, because we looked at the can before we recorded, is a uh, golden style box. Is that right? Yeah, golden style box. So let's crack this open. What do you know? Now, you've just won a, um, a medal for a bot beer, but I think right. your bot beer was not golden, it was brown in color, right? Yeah, it's a typical color for black. But okay. I, I'm not 100% sure this, I think this is uh, something yeah. probably that um, he's just brewing what he wants, which sounds good. He? How do you know? <laughs> how do you know? He can't wants. be tied to the style every time. No. Gonna, how do you know it's a he? I'm just guessing. There you go. He doesn't know just it's a throwing heat. it out there. Yeah, throwing it out there. There we go. All right. So, winter lager is, and this is definitely golden in color. Now, as I look at it, it's slightly slight haze. Slight clear, haze. Clear with yeah. a slight haze. Yeah, slight mm -hmm. clear with a slight haze. <laughs> Sounds like a weather report. <laughs> um, beautiful white top to that. Look at that fantastic white head on there. I love that. I like it when. And also, we're using sample glasses here because we only have these small cans. And I like it when the head sticks around, especially in a sample glass. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm assuming this would be good in a Willy Bucker glass, the one we talked about. And it will probably have the head going down it. Yeah, it's, it's Leaves nice. lacing. It's nice when the, when the head hangs in there like that. So, any aroma that's different to what we had? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, this, this one's got more moist. Say what the hop is in it? Fruity? Uh, guess what? Halatel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think they use it for all of them, and uh, that's fine. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's any difference in the uh, in the malt bill. Oh, Wyman malts. Well, there we go. It's a big advert for Wyman. Yeah. We'll give that a ding. Um, it almost it almost tastes like like a Hellas that's been really like raised up, you know, in gravity. Yeah, thickness, you know. or with some Maybach, Maybach that's been brought down. Yeah, yeah, something like that. It yeah. doesn't have the sweet finish though of a Hellas. 
And if, yeah, I, yeah. if I think of you Don't guys, yeah. you did a smoke tailor switch. We'll have to forget that because that was outrageously <laughs> good. <laughs> but your Hellas, yeah. that's a, kind of a typical this, one, a heavenly Hellas yeah. that you do. This reminds um, me of like a fest beer. A way. fest beer? Wow. Yeah, like, um, uh, I anger has it. Or no, no. Oh, it that has no, that, fest beer. Okay, yeah. They, what are you saying there at the end? A little. Paul Lena? Yeah, I, I'm trying to think of a. One German, of those German. I'm trying ones. to think of a German brewer that. that you know, that it, their Oktoberfest is really like a fest beer. You know what this really has is a very nice dry finish. Lots of crispness all the way through it. I think you feel like you're getting something a little bit more in body. You know, 6%, yeah. that's not a big deal. But, you know, yeah. you're getting a little bit more based upon where we've been yeah, yeah. from the it's cult. It's definitely right? a bigger beer than the other one. Bigger yeah. beer all around. Yeah. It stands out that way. It still has the help. Very, very nice. Um, Slight citrusy in there, but you know, I think in the I think in their description they say sort of exotic fruits. Well, I I can't get that, so sorry about that, folks. <laughs> you get any exotic fruits? Well, I let it warm up. Let it warm up. Well, wait a minute. I thought lagers were supposed to be drunk cold. Yeah, well, well, it depends day. on how cold. <laughs> right, <laughs> there's cold and there's cold. <laughs> and you're always going to get more flavor. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I, I think fifty five. Is a pretty decent temperature to drink them at, 50 to 55. Wow, right that's almost like cellar temperature in English beers. Yeah, maybe a little cooler. Maybe, maybe you start you start it cooler because it can always, yeah. it can always get warmer. Yeah. It's never going to get any colder. colder right, right. <laughs> like well, outside. Yeah. Well, last year my beers got colder because we only served people outside. outside. So, okay, that's right. Yeah, we had colder. the pandemic okay. to deal with. Yeah, right, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Um, but, I mean, if you're trying to pick up an aroma like you're having trouble, picking up an aroma, then warm it up, swirl it, and you'll, you'll get a little more aroma. There we go. From A tip from the brewers, warm it up and swirl it. Yeah. Fantastic. All right, guys, thank you very much. Don't drink it all down because I want to do a cheers or Prost uh, to Prost Brewing. Uh, um, but before we do that, I'm going to go around and say, out of the four, pick a favorite. Chuck. Uh, I, I would say, actually, I like the coleslaw. <laughs> Steve, I'm going to go with the pills. And I'm going to go with the donkle. So this right. one just covers it all, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah, it does. Uh, thank you very much. This has been a Britain Yankee craft beer podcast instant brew review. It hasn't been as instant as we'd like it to be, but it's instant enough. Thank you very much, Chuck. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. And Prost. 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 I'm going to give it a Good ding. Here we go. I love it. Cheers. We'll be back. Cheers. We'll be back very shortly with more beers on the Instant Brew Review. All the best. Cheers. Now, you do promise an explanation of the cock Do it. Damn. It's an addendum. <laughs> <laughs> Over to Chuck. <laughs> okay, addendum. So... Decoction is just where you, you cook the, the mass uh, a little extra. You, normally, we just take the mass and we bring it up to 150 or 145, whatever. And with decoction, you keep some of the mass. You separate some of it out, like maybe a third, or, and you bring it up to a boil. In the old days, before thermometers, they used to do that because they could take a third out, and then when they added a third that would boil back in, then it would go from 90 to 122, and then it would go from 122 to 145, and then they just step it up like that. But, uh, but uh, as the rumors came along, then they didn't have, it wasn't necessary, but it was a technique. And, and it also, in the private time you do something different, it makes your beer taste different. In this case, it brings out melanoids, or, or, uh, which are, are uh, more complex sugars, and they can give you sort of a fruity character coming from your malt, a fruitiness, a lighter, uh, you know, beers like this, maybe it's going to, it's not going to be quite as obvious, but like a darker beer, like a Bach, Doppelbach, it'll be sort of a dark fruit mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. character. Um, and uh, that's it pretty much. Thank you for that explanation, Chuck. <laughs> We're done now. See you next time. Thank you for reminding me, Steve. That's all right. I thought <laughs> you know. Cheers.